Hello, in this video I will show you how to find the falling limit and I will show you how to do so with a very advanced technique, the one which is based on Taylor expansions. If you watch my previous video on the same limit, you know that you can find this limit with the help of elementary techniques such as difference of squares identity. It is very simple. If you haven't watched that, I strongly encourage you to go and have a look. The link to that particular solution in the description to this video. But in this video, I will do a far more advanced method, which works in far greater number of circumstances. And that's why it's very important to know this as well. So what I need to do before I can use that method I will need to transform this expression slightly and what I will do is this, I'll take my function like this and I will factor x out of this expression like so and now this second factor is in the form where we can use the Taylor expansion when I say Taylor expansion I particularly mean very specific Taylor expansion this is the one which you can find on Wikipedia page here. If you, this is a Wikipedia page on Taylor series, and there is a section here which is called binomial series. This is the one we're about to use. It is set here. It is presented here. We're going to use a slightly modified version of this binomial expansion. Taylor series of the binomial function and this is the version I'm about to use. In my version what I say is this if I take a binomial expression 1 plus z power alpha it expands like this it expands into two parts it expands into Taylor polynomial with binomial coefficients and the Taylor remainder which I present in a very simple form like this it's the nth power of z times the epsilon function, of which I need to know only one thing, that the limit of this function is 0 once z approaches 0. This is a version of Taylor expansion for binomial function, and this is the one we're going to use for the second fact in here. Before we do so, let me first remind you what the binomial coefficient is. That's the expression of this type. We multiply in the numerator k different factors uh, the first factor is alpha and the rest are just the reduction of alpha by 1 alpha take 1 alpha take 2 and all the way to alpha take k plus 1 and in the denominator we just multiply all of the integers from 1 to k now the name for this number is a factorial of k of this formula we only need the case n equal 1, so we will expand this polynomial up to the term 1, it will be two terms in the expansion, and the alpha is a half, because this is a square root, which is the, in a power language, in a language of power functions, is a power half. Once I fix this choice for n and alpha, my binomial expansion takes the following form. This is the left-hand side, with alpha being half, in the polynomial, I'll have two terms, the k0 and k1 term, here they are. And here's my remainder for n equals 1. Epsilon, it's a mysterious function of which we know nothing except this only fact. And that's enough to finish this question. Once again, let me emphasize that the square root, that the square root is a power function with the exponent a half and in place of z I'm gonna take 1 on x so once we've done this prep work we can come back to the limit and see how this helps to find the value for that limit look at this I take the I'll take my original function which is factored like this and I replace this square root with the expansion on the right hand side in place of z I use 1 on x, x factor, 1 plus 1 on 2x, these two terms, 
with z 1 on x. 1 on x, epsilon 1 on x is this term. Again, z is 1 on x. And take 1 is this, take 1. This is my substitution of tail expansion in place of this square root. Now we can cancel. We can cancel this one and this negative one. Then we can bring this x back inside this bracket. That will cancel x and x in here. So once you finish all of these cancellations, the result will be as simple as a half. x is gone. And epsilon on 1 on x. This x is gone as well. I would like to point out that first we factor out x, we use the tailor for the square root, and then we brought x back in. That's an interesting combination of factoring and expanding. So now the limit we need to find becomes equivalent or equal to the limit like this. A half is just a constant. It's can be taken out of the limit, and now we have to find the limit of the epsilon function of 1 on x when x goes to infinity. Once you substitute z for 1 on x, the expression becomes as simple as this, and you can reference the only property of epsilon function which we need. I would like to point out that in this result, we also use this fact from our prior knowledge that the limit of 1 on x when x goes to the infinity is 0. So this fact is also e indispensable for the successful solution of this example. If you watch my previous solution to the same limit where I only relied on elementary methods, no tailor was used in there, you realized, I hope, that this also was a very key ingredient in that solution as well. So, here we go. This is the second way to solve the same limit with a very advanced technique based on Taylor. It's a very versatile technique. It can be applied in a variety of different circumstances, unlike my previous solution, which is based on elementary identity, which is very specific for this example. So I hope you'll find this useful and you will be able to apply it in some other examples which you do in your math studies. If you have any comments in relation to this solution or any suggestions, leave them in the comment section below this video. If you would like to see further examples like this with the advanced use of Taylor for limits, subscribe to my channel. Otherwise, thank you and I will see you in my future videos.